guys, I'm back with another video, and today I'm going to be showing you how to boot your Nintendo Switch into RCM, or recovery mode, and get some payloads on there. So I'll explain what that is in a minute, but if you haven't been following the news recently, a bunch of hacking teams released bugs and exploits for the Switch that allow you to run basically the equivalent of the precursor to custom firmware. They allow you to run unsigned code that will allow you to install custom firmware, but this is the first step in the process. So if you have been following it, there are ways that you can 3D print your own parts. So all this is is a little thing that fits on the Joy-Con rail, and it just shorts out uh, two pins. So I will put a uh, link to download this on Thingiverse if you have a 3D printer. But all you would do is slide it down and then boot using the correct boot keys. But we'll get into that in a minute. A lot of people don't have access to 3D printers. So I'm going to show a method that you actually can do without one. And the only thing that I think you need is an iFixit toolkit. Only because it has all the tools that you would need. So in here, you're going to need three things. Or four things, rather. The tweezers and a screwdriver with two bits, both the Nintendo Tri-Wing, and this is head number Y000, and I'll put all this in the description. And then for the small Phillips head that's in there, that's just a regular Phillips head zero. So grab all that and put this on the side. And you're gonna need your right Joy-Con, so the one that has the home button on it. And the reason you need this one is on the rail, actually where it slides into the switch, underneath this little flap down at the bottom here, there are a bunch of pins. And inside there, I'll put a little screenshot here so you can see what we're getting at. Um, there's gonna be two pins and all the way on the right, pins nine and 10. We're gonna have to get those two to short. And what that means is to connect them together so the current flows through both of them. And the reason this works is when the switch boots with that pin held along with the volume up and the power button, there's a glitch in the actual processor in here that allows you to run your recovery mode, which has its own bug, and then that allows you to install custom firmware further from there. But the first thing that we need to do is take this Joy-Con apart, and then we use the Tri-Wing screwdriver for that, and then just go ahead and take all your screws out. And then try to keep them as organized as possible. Um, a thing that I like to do for this is actually the top of the iFixit toolkit has these little ribs on it, and you could really just put them in little slots. And for really any project where you're dealing with screws, I find this is a really, really good way to keep all your screws together. So once you get your four screws out, I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. The back panel sort of just pops right on off. And then you'll see that there's a ribbon cable that holds the two pieces together. And then here's where your other screwdriver bit comes in. So we're just gonna take the Y bit out and then put the Phillips head bit in. And then on this piece right up here, let me zoom in and show you. So actually right here is the only other screw that you need to take out, and then the entire Joy-Con actually will come apart. And then there we go, just put that with your other screw bits, and then the ribbon connected part along with the Joy-Con rail should literally just come right off from there. So there is one piece in here that you need to be mindful of. It's this little black piece right here. Just make sure that it doesn't fall anywhere. So if you want, put that with your other screw bits and whatnot. So now we're left with the interior of the Joy-Con. And then let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit more here. And then right down here is the actual rail that I was talking about earlier in the video. And then if you look very, very closely, the last two pins on this rail here are actually shorted together. So I'm just gonna try and get this to focus here. And if you look right on the end here, all you need to do is take the second pin from the right-hand side and drag it over to the farthest right pin. 
So you would take your tweezers, I find are the easiest. So take your tweezers, drag the pin over, and then once it's stable in there, just put your Joy-Con back together, and then I'll be back with the next steps on how to activate Fuse HLA, which is the name of the exploit. And to put your Joy-Con back together, it's the exact same steps that we followed before in the reverse order. So I'll just show that here briefly. And then be careful when you're closing this with your ribbon cable. Just literally close it like a book. Make sure everything is where it should be. And then something to double check, which I've had to take this apart for, just make sure that the Joy-Con release button on the back up here still actually is spongy so it's not gonna get stuck. and then you have your Joy-Con back together. So while these pins are shorted, your Joy-Con will still charge and everything, but for some reason your Joy-Con will say that it's in Bluetooth mode. There are other ways around this, like the 3D printed part that I showed before, but for now it really doesn't make the biggest deal. Um, anyway, moving on. The next steps that we need to do are grab your Switch, and I do have mine in airplane mode, although that doesn't matter. Um, as of yet, any firmware this, this still works as this is a hardware bug and not a software bug. So the next thing we need to do is grab our USB-C cable, plug one end into your laptop, and then get ready to plug the other end in. And then what you do here is turn off your switch. So let me go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to hold the power button until it shuts off. I'm just going to hold it for a few more seconds. I always like to be double safe on this. And then once you're sure that it's off, the home button, as the Tegra processor calls it, which is that pin 9 and 10 short going on in the Joy-Con, that's one button that you need. You need the volume up button on the top right here and the power button. So you don't need to do anything with this. Just hold volume up and your power button and then plug it in. and your switch should boot into recovery mode. And then now we're gonna go over to the computer and I'm gonna show you how to do the computer side of things now. So now on the computer side of things, you're gonna to have to open the Fuse launcher folder in a terminal window. So. I'll put links to download this from GitHub in the description um, so you guys can open this up. And once you get that all set and your switch is plugged in in the recovery mode, what you're going to do is enter this command and then enter the name of the payload, which is in my case fuse, F U S E E dot B I N, and hit enter, and that will go ahead and launch the fuse launcher to inject your payload into the switch. Um, to make this work, you're going to have to have a working Python 3 and Pi USB uh, environment on your computer. So to do that, I'll put links and commands on how to do that in the description, and you'll be all good to go. So now let's go and check out what we just did. And we have our reswitched little Fuse HLA payload that shows our device code. So that's it for this video that shows you how to upload a payload and how to hack your Joy-Con or use a 3D printed jig to get your Switch into recovery mode and do whatever you want with it. Hopefully soon in the future we'll have some homebrew, some emulators and stuff of that like, and I can't wait to see it. Huge thanks to the ReSwitch team and all the different hackers that actually put all this together, Fail Overflow, Ken Temkin, players of that like. Thank you so much guys, without people like you, we really wouldn't get to enjoy our consoles the way that they're supposed to be enjoyed. But. That's it for this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.